In order to create content, I will take the plugin content and drag it onto a empty position in the buttons grid. I can place my content inside the positioning panel as I wish. In the settings panel, I will select the font size and the font type. And in my case, I wanted to have a transparent background, so I will set the background transparency alpha to zero. Pressing the content button triggers it on air and off air. But I want it to go on air with an effect. I will choose one of the presets, regular right, and try it out. I see that it's coming in from the right, but from the center of my vertical position. So I want to unlock the vertical position here in this menu. Now I see that it comes in from the custom position. Now I'm going to create the background shape for my digital clock, the shape plugin. Important now is to set its visual priority to be underneath my digital clock. I can adjust the size of it directly inside the positioning environment. After defining size and position, I will go and set the color of it. I go to the foreground and will select a gradient fill. One of the presets I'm going to set alpha red. Select OK. And so it already has its correct color. I want to add the same effect that I did to digital clock and also unlock its effect position on the y-axis. So it comes in exactly the same way that my clock does. I will group this later. Now I will add a media text because I want to create a lower third. I will adjust the position inside the positioning environment just as before. In the settings I can directly type in the text area what I want to show. Morning news in this case. Also I can set the font and the font size. It is important that I set the correct dimension of my plugin so that my writings will look exactly the way that I want. So I work between the positioning environment and the settings panel. I can select to have every writing in uppercase. Now I will select a background shape to it. Just as before, I will go and work in the positioning panel for the size. Here I have gone a little bit out of my magnification, so I can use the mouse roll in order to magnify and zoom in and out of my positioning panel. But in the magnifying there is always a set to scene magnification that will always set the dimension of my project to the positioning panel size. Again, the visual priority has to be correctly set. Now I'm going to set the same gradient fill as I did for the background of the digital clock. Next thing, I want to add a media file, a video file to my project. The file chooser that opens up allows me to check the preview, video and the sound of the chosen media. So I'm quite sure of what I'm opening. If I press the newly created button, it will send directly the media on air. But I don't want it to be full screen. I want to make it smaller. So in the settings tab, I will check fit video. And in the positioning environment, I will just make it as big as I want it to be. So now when I play it out, it will have a smaller size. Exactly the one that I have set in the positioning environment. I want it to loop because it's a short clip. Also, I want to add an effect. When I send it on air, I want it to zoom in and fade. In and out. Let's see how this looks like.
pretty. Now I want to add a background picture, so I drag in a picture plugin. I go and select it among the backgrounds. Satisfied with what I see in the preview, here it is. By default, always visual priority 50, like any plugin that I just create. So I'll just drag it down to zero in order to stay underneath everything. The next graphic element that I want to add now is the ticker. In the positioning panel, I will define the size of the ticker and also its position. I would like it to be the same height as my lower third is. So I will select the shape of the lower third inside the positioning, press Ctrl and also select the ticker. In the positioning toolbar, I'll find the function where I can set the two plugins to be of the same height. Next, I'm going to choose the ticker settings. So I'll put it into edit mode and go into the settings panel. Here I can set font size and font type and see directly the preview of it inside the positioning environment. Again, also here, I can select to have my text directly in uppercase. Next, I want to define the tickle colors. Here I'm choosing the background color. With the magnifier, I can choose exactly the same shade of red that I have for my lower third. And for the foreground, I will use white. I can choose a different color for displaying the titles, because I can use an RSS text and I will see the difference between the title and the main text. I'm adding a shadow to the text and then I will just simply edit the playlist. I'm going to show you now how to grab the RSS feed from a URL. I look for the feed that I want to display in this example I go to the top stories of CNN. I'm copying the web address with Ctrl plus C. Now I'm creating a shortcut on my desktop. Right click, create shortcut. And I paste the web address. I will give this shortcut a name. So now that I'm done, I'll go into the playlist panel of my ticker and press plus. Go into the desktop and select my new URL ticker. Open. And so if I press play, the ticker is going to show the RSS feed that I have just inserted into the playlist. I can select a different speed in the speed section here. I'm also changing the separator now. I want a hyphen instead of the tilde. So next I'm going into the effects panel and want to choose the effect with which the ticker comes in. Selecting regular down means it's coming up from downwards. Maybe I'm choosing another color for the title. And now I feel more satisfied with it. So I go on and check a little bit what my project looks like. So next, what I'm doing now, a little bit faster, is checking that the effects of the incoming lower third are as I wish, coming from the left side quite the same as we did for the background of the digital clock and all the rest of the plugins I place them as I'm satisfied with and so we go on and select the next plugins to add so to the right side I will add now a slideshow as before when I create a new plugin I will have to define its size and position inside the positioning environment first and so now I go into the playlist and will select the images that I want my plugin to show. I can do the multi-selection and here I have them. 
Next, I'm going to define what effect I want the picture to come in and go out with. For having a scroll effect, I will use down top S, S standing for smooth, in the effects of coming in and top down S for the effect of getting out. In the settings, I will adapt my pictures to the area, meaning that the plugin will select the best fit of the image. And so I have the scroll effect. The last content that I'm creating in my project right now is the text show. Again, as for every other plugin, I'm going to define size and position inside the positioning panel. And since I want it to be the same size as my slideshow, I'm going to multi-select the two plugins inside the positioning panel by pressing Ctrl. And then I'm going to use the tools of same width and same height. And then I'm going to align them to the right. And so now that I'm satisfied with the positions and the sizes, I'm going to put my text show into edit mode and go back to the settings panel. Here I'm setting all the important features that I want, such as font, font size, and colors, adapting to the area, alignments, and also the speed with which the slides refresh. Inside the settings panel, there is the file line where I can go and select the file that I want my text show to show. In this case, I'm selecting a txt file, but it also could be an RSS file. In the effects panel, I'm going to select the same incoming and outgoing effects that I did for the slideshow, meaning down top S and top down S. Now I am creating the group content, where I will group all the contents that I want to go on air at once and with their effects that I have already set. Here I have grouped the media text and the shape that make my lower third. Adding contents to the group object is as easy as dragging and dropping the desired contents onto the settings area of the group content. Pressing the red stop button on the upper toolbar will stop every graphics content that I'm playing out. I'm renaming the group content and calling it start and I also moved it to the common contents. The common contents is a line of buttons in the grid that is always visible in any tab that I am in. When they are off air, I can freely move my contents inside the buttons grid. So my little project is ready now. I have some contents that I trigger on air individually, some are grouped, and so I can actually define which content to send on air and when. So I hope that you enjoyed this bit long tutorial and that you're able to take some advantage and some ideas out of it. And uh, remember that we have to find everything in our manual. So please don't hesitate to read it.